Hello, my cross stitch friends. My name is Amanda May, and this is my channel, Artith Design, where we celebrate all things counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching, and making all the things. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you are returning, I'm so happy that you came back to spend some time with me this week. Today is November 3rd, 2020. It is Tuesday. I have Luna Moon Pug here and Loki Apple might be making an appearance. We shall see. I have one finish to show you of, of my enjoying enjoyment stitching, a bunch, uh, several works in progress. And I have two things of Happy Mail a, and then a really cool score. And I swear it has to do with stitching <laughs> that I would love to show you. We'll focus on <laughs> all cross stitch stuff first before we get to other the Happy Meal and stuff because with the time change here in Maryland, it comes with the, the lighting and everything's gonna change. So I wanna make sure I get to show you all my stitching while it is wrinkled. I, I would like those wrinkles to be well lit. <laughs> so I, I I have little Luna Pug here. She We got her on some new allergy shampoo and uh, trying to help her a little bit more and I have a little pug barking. We had a windstorm the last couple days and he's hearing kind of the howling of the wind and our apple tree got blown over so we have to deal with that. No more apples for me <laughs> unless I plant another tree and anyway excuse the the barks. It's we're approaching the holidays. Uh, this in the month of November, it we commemorate Indigenous Peoples Month here in the United States. And just a reminder, there are Indigenous peoples all around, not just in the United States. And so if you have a stitch or something that you want to do or read a book or watch a film, something about that, that would be great. I have my No New Worlds pattern here and there's been some great, good, good stitching stuff, uh, Sue Coleman stuff, the Barbara Lavalli, all, all the beautiful things. And I have another little, really cool pattern to show you that I got in um, the Stitching Kindness. So let's get started. All right, we have a Luna Pug. Hi, sweetie baby. Yeah, did you investigate? All right, the first project that I want to show you is my stitch. It's called The Light. This was a freebie pattern by Barbara Anna Designs, and it came out in March, April of this year. I'm not sure if she still has the link on her Instagram that will take you to the document that you can get it. Again, it's a freebie, but I don't know if she still has it up and accessible. I decided to stitch mine on a piece of 36 count chickpea fabric that I got from Kitten Stitcher and I'm using Sulky and I'm using the modified Michelle Garrett conversion. So she converted all of hers into Sulky and then I went ahead and kind of tweaked that conversion. My needle minders from Karen. Thank you, Karen, the little gnomes and I love it. So I have been using it uh, while stitching in hand. I know this isn't the most glamorous way to stitch, but I just wanted to show you that I'm like putting some extra fabric down so that I can work on this piece right here. And the pug is getting on chairs and trying to get up on the kitchen counter. Mischievous. Here is what she looks like. I was able to add the lantern here and I got her dress all filled in and I need to put her little shoes and then there's the village and then the the really beautiful border but I have her almost done I just need to add a couple of the the spots here and here but oh, I love it so much the skirt is so is so I just I don't know I just love it and I I liked the historical reference and I'm not sure so there's a stole right here and traditionally many of them are made um with fox or mink and so for her to have a stole and be a fox I just thought that was so cute and I officially have a pug on my kitchen counter 
I do. Adam? Adam? Can you come and get the pug? Uh-oh. <laughs> so... <laughs> we got new dining room chairs, which means we moved the or we moved the other chairs out of the way and I just realized that I pushed them a little too close to the kitchen counter and he was able to hop up on the kitchen counter. Yes. And are there a basket of tomatoes on the counter? Yes, there are. Is that what he's in? Yes, he loves his tomatoes. Thank you so much. Whoops, a daisy. <laughs> so pugs are going in their crate now because they cannot be trusted. <laughs> All right, so I love this little fox. I am using the Sulky. I've got to go ahead and grab some of my other colors to finish her up. The one drawback that I have, and it's been fixed because I've talked to the company, but I have some of the older spools. And if the top of the, the Sulky, the number thing comes off and there's no number on the side of this cap of the spool, then I don't know what number I have. So again, they told me that they fixed it and so new new stuff is, is but see, I like this is 1218 and they actually have it printed. So I lost the top sticker, but I know it's a 1218. Here's one, it actually has a sticker and it has the number on the bottom. But I have a couple here, is this one? Where I don't know, okay, so, Whoopsie Daisy, which which color is this? So not only did I lose the sticker, I lose the bobbin. Got to pick that up later, but it also it doesn't have anything on the bottom. So <laughs> I need to figure out how to uh, number some stuff. I know this isn't very fancy. It's my hairband and a and a post-it note telling me what color I have. I again uh, replacement spools. I have. I'm gonna have that fixed. Anyway, love this so much. Again, this is chickpea. And on the other half of the fabric is the Sweetheart Hill that I'm working on, but I haven't made any progress to show you. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. I really want to get her the light done. I have the other, the bird, the goose one done. I, and she was, I did her on the Silk Weaver, like the Blue Caribbean, and she looks so beautiful. So again, the next one I have, it's actually a finish. So I'm so excited about that. It is the Bouquet 1813 kit. I don't have this fully finished. I'm gonna pull you closer because I'm sitting on the edge of this. So hold on one second, I'm gonna move the camera. Here we go. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna sit back a little bit more, get a little more comfy. I start talking cross stitch and I'm literally on the edge of my seat. Okay. <laughs> I need to fully finish this. And this kit I got from Kitten Stitcher's website and it came with the finishing the back fabric and the like ribbon. So I need to finish this and I did it with all the called for. I had some threads left over and this is on a piece of wood from Maryland and then it was sand. I, my husband drilled the holes and then I sanded it and then I used that as like a makeshift uh, needle, not needle, words, thread keep. <laughs> Okay, here we go. So this is my finish. I did decide to put it as 1813 so I would remember what I stitched. <laughs> I really enjoyed stitching this part right here and I really love how this all turned out. I used the one strand of the fancy floss that it's called for that it came with. It's all Weeks Dye Works. And so one strand over two of the linen threads. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. Super, 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 super happy. So I need to make it into the little pillow. And I'm excited, I got that done. Yay! <laughs> it's the little things, right? Oh, I had a question about this finish here. And that is, 
the cardinal piece and it's a blackbird designs piece and it came out of the home for the holidays book and it this pattern that people have asked if it's available just that single pattern and no it is not it is only available in this book and the pattern is called tis the season and it's in the book i used trenway silks for this and a polka dot linen and then the it's a thrift store frame and it's a plastic frame from humco they did a lot of home decor plastic um cute tchotchke i'm trying to think of the right word items of the 60s 70s uh wall hanging stuff that were that was all the the plastic but cool stuff right so i'm excited that i got that frame and it fit it's the little things in life. So yes, this book, I know that many uh, of the local needlework shops, online needlework shops and Amazon all have this book if you're interested in stitching that piece. <laughs> all right, the next piece I worked on was Cozy Cardinals. This is in the December issue of Just Cross Stitch. This is a beautiful piece by Ryan Mack of Wild Violet Cross Stitch. She made the cover, congratulations Ryan, and I can see why, right? That beautiful fabric was dyed by Angela of Color and Cotton Studio, and I'm excited I saw, I follow Color and Cotton, and she has a new studio space, larger expanded space, so it's really exciting to see the needlework industry and while we are in some tumultuous times right now, it's exciting to see companies that are looking towards you know, 2021 and beyond in the needlework industry and expanding and doing all the things. So I'm so excited for everyone. Let's celebrate the successes of those around us. And with that, I am happy to say that I got the little lady cardinal done yes that little lady uh, on this piece and it is on a piece of fabric it is similar it's got that similar speckled look it is a piece of fabric that was gifted to me by Karen hi Karen thank you and I'm not sure of the maker of this fabric but it's got these it's got that same kind of speckled look and I love this so much so this is not a full coverage piece per se but it is this is my first like really dense cross stitch meaning there's really no spaces the whole bird filled in and then there's a lot of the cool negative space here with the with the snowflakes but the the birds themselves are dense are dense and it's that's it's been really fun so i've been doing that modified parking method with my threads so stitching like the reds here there's three different shades of red so i stitch the one you know and down and then i pull it up and then i place it park it where the next stitch will be but then i'll do the line of the other color then park the thread and so on and i've been doing it in hand and i've been parking i've been rolling my fabric like this and then I'll take my I'll take my little clippy and just pull that the the color the thread away here and I clip it right here and so while I'm stitching in hand I'm holding the threads I had a fantastic question on one of my stitching in hand videos that I did about left-handed stitchers who stitch in hand and that was a great question I follow crosshatch quilts uh, she is a left-handed stitcher and I'm hoping that she will do a stitch in hand video showing us how she does it and then I follow Heather McLean 4 and I will I'm hoping I'll have her down below she is also a left-handed stitcher I follow her on Instagram she is an a gorgeous stitcher and it's wonderful to see so if you are looking to start stitching in hand and you're lefty yeah I, I I recommend 
checking her out on Instagram. And yeah, so I, I apologize. I'm so right hand dominant. I wouldn't even know how to begin to help someone who is left handed. And I apologize for my deficiency in that. I am using all of the called for on the Cozy Cardinal. And I made my little thread drops and I used my fancy little punches, the star and then, uh, and, and so instead of bobbins, I have them on the thread drops and then I did the pencil marking with my numbers and everything because I want to be, you know, prolific stitcher like Brenda and Laura of the, you know, Brenda and the serial starter. I... I am woefully behind on my floss tube channel watching and viewing, but I was stitching on cozy cardinals the other night and I was behind a couple weeks and I'm watching. And then all of a sudden I hear Brenda talk about my book uh, and which is the sampler stitching book. And I want to say thank you so much to both of you for your charming mention of my book. I really appreciate it. And it's just another example of wonderful people supporting, you know, helping to support each other in the needlework community. And I really appreciate that. This book is my inventory notebook I created in mind for those who stitch samplers. And you're able to put your information down. And then if you would like you can either draw, sketch, or attach a four by six inch photo of your piece in here. And yep. Yeah, and so thank you so much again, Brenda and Laura, for your kind words. Cozy Cardinal, I love it. I have a thing for cardinals. I put up here, I got this little cardinal right here. She was a save the stitches that I got two or three years ago. And then the companion piece up here and it's a Christmas. So I hung them up with my cardinals. So I'm excited to add more cardinals to my collection. And we actually have been seeing the cardinals about. So it's, they're so magical. I think they're such a magical bird. Seeing any birds really are magical, I think. Especially, anyway, I love it. <laughs> All right. Those are the pieces that I can show you that I have been stitching on this week. I have been doing some model stitching and that's exciting and I can't wait until that all can be shown. But with Cozy Cardinals, I had sent my husband out to get the one thread that I kept missing, which was the 3852. And it was the one thread. He went to four different craft stores, two Michaels, and two Joannes in two different towns get, trying to find the thread and he couldn't find it. Well, it was the start all right here of the co of, of the Lady Cardinal. And so I finally gave in and I put in an order for some DMC. And I checked a couple of, this, of the, the smaller sellers that I typically buy from and they don't have it. So I ended up going on to 123 Stitch and you can't just buy one thread. So <laughs> I made sure to put 3852 in my cart. And then I looked because they have miniatures, dollhouse miniatures, which with my children, they've been getting into the dollhouse thing. So I ended up putting a couple of the little frames for dollhouse, the 112th scale in my cart. So I have that. And so I'm working on a project for that. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. If you would like to <laughs> check out my website, I'm going to have a uh, downloadable thing for, you know, miniature inserts for <laughs> your dollhouse, or if you want to use them for your charms for your thread keeps or your thread uh, bling. <laughs> so I'm excited because I need to, I, I don't have enough activities in my life. Well, so I, I got the miniature frames, I got the 3852, and then I decided that I should buy some more threads. I went on eBay a couple months ago and purchased this bright needle chart and it's called Sweet Summer Sampler. 
and it has the sunflowers on it and it's gorgeous. Uh, this is a used copy that I got. I, I don't know if it's still available. It's, it's book number 31 and it's from the Sweet Seasons series. I haven't checked the other components. Everything is charted in Thread Gatherer Silk in Colors. I have never stitched with it, nor was I able to find it, those on 123 Stitch, so that's fine. So the next thing I did was I looked at the DMC because it, it has the conversion chart. And I looked at the DMC and then I looked next to it and I saw Anchor. And I realized that I have never stitched a project with Anchor Thread before. Teresa Kitten Stitcher, she tells everyone how wonderful Anchor th anchor floss is and I thought well I better try something new so I went ahead and added or I got the entire palette for this project the whole thing in anchor floss except for the one it was the the thread gatherer color they tell you specifically in here and the directions to not substitute anything that you must or you should stitch uh winter with winter sky which is the thread gatherer silking colors 981 there is no anchor equivalent so you have to do with the dmc so i did get the dmc color which is this the purple so it's all anchor and one dmc i'm excited to do my first project with anchor floss i'm so i am trying new things I, as many of you know, I am a new stitcher. I have been stitching about five years specifically cross stitch. And I just want to learn all the things. <laughs> the next thing I, I had to do, I had ordered um, half of the, the colors that were available a couple months ago for this project that was so kindly sent to me by Michelle Garrett. She sent me the sunflower house by the work basket i don't know if this is still available and it is i'm looking the number if that's the the right number 389 i decided to 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 purchase the fancy flosses well i had to buy them um, three different occasions and i'm still missing one color <laughs> but I am determined. So I have, I purchased all the fancies, well, except for one. And I'm excited to work on this project. Can you tell I have sunflowers on the my, on my mind? So I kitted, I, I, I got threads for two sunflower projects. I got two, I got some miniature frames for the dollhouse. And I got my last thread that I needed for Cozy Cardinals. So I am feeling very good. Yay! <laughs> all right. That is all I have to show you for my whips and my planned starts. The next thing I would love to talk about is my stitching kindness. I have uh, two, piece, two uh, things of Happy Meal. And so we'll start with uh, Karen uh, Bowen. She is KEB Designs. She is a fellow cross-stitch designer. And she sent me a wonderfully thoughtful package and thoughtful note. And she sent me, talking again about November and Indigenous Peoples Month, she sent me this lovely book. And it's The Portrait of Native American Families by uh, Susan Hess. And I, it was really lovely to see the different pieces here. I really like this. So that was nice to see. And this is from the Jeanette Cruz Designs. And there's a bunch of different books by Susan Hess that it looks like very similar kind of she has a mountain man, cowboy, American farmer, portrait of famous American Indians. Um, I don't know Southwest Wind, I a native dream. I'm not sure if she is an indigenous artist herself. So I, I have not done any research on her, but I do like these designs. So thank you so much for that. 
And then the next thing I want to show you and give her a high five, uh, a, a YouTube high five. I don't know what, what you do, but me being awkward, excuse me. <laughs> she told me that she was really inspired by the books that I have published, my inventory notebooks, the Charting Your needle Needlework Legacy, my Needleworkers Notebook for Cross Stitch Starts, Stitching Samplers. So she was so inspired that she created her own book for Cross Stitch Gifts. She watched an episode from Barbara's daughter and Barbara, she's a prolific stitcher. She's out of New Jersey. I have caught some of her videos. She stitches in hand and she also has I think children under 10 and <laughs> she had made a comment that she wished she had an inventory tracker for all cross stitch gift because she gifts things and then they're gone and I'm like what did I do for the last year and a half I have all these gifts that went away so Karen took the bull by the horns or the needle and the thread and she went ahead and created the book and kudos to her so it, not only is it a inventory book for cross stitch gifts she also includes an original pattern so she here is her book I will have this linked in my Amazon storefront so I'll have a link below yes it is an affiliate storefront but I I swear I have some good goodies in there so Karen published this this pattern is available it's inside this book so you get the gift inventory notebook and the pattern and I want to thank her. She had, she, in the foreword of her book, she thanked me for inspiring her to create uh, a cross stitch book. So yay, it is so fun and exciting to see how things have grown and changed. I published my first book in 2016. It was a embroidery and cross stitch graph paper notebook uh, 2016 on Amazon and there were nothing there was not, no books of it of its kind out there and now boy oh boy so <laughs> it's 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 different it's navigating those that um, steal your work and those that thoughtfully credit and enhance and and contribute to the community so that's very nice. Oh, she sent me a nice card too. I don't want to be bitter because um, a lot of people have stolen my work. <laughs> it's hard and many artists know that. So, you know, protect copyright. Don't share charts. <laughs> the next piece of Happy Meal that I got is... From my friend Grace. She is out of West Virginia and she sure sends me some fun stuff. And Grace, so I have some goodies to show you and they're all needlework related. And bubble wrap. The children see bubble wrap. They're like, can I pop that mom? <laughs> so she sent me this little frame goodie here and it's, and it's on linen and it's stitched like over four so that's why the stitches look so big. And so this is on an older frame with the, the nails, the rusty crusty nails. So I'm probably gonna pull that piece out of the frame. She sent me, this is really fun. Put a bird on it. I know I, I've told you all, I accidentally started collecting needlepoint pillows. I see them and I can't help myself and I get them. This is um, like a Bargello and it, yes, there's pug hair there. <laughs> so this is our Bargello stitch and with the velvet on the back. I, I try, I try my hardest and yes, uh, I have not purchased any needlepoint pillows, you know, since the, the, since, well, this year. <laughs> and she knows I like needlepoint pillows. And so she sent me, look at what I have to do. I need to make a pillow. So look at these little birds. They're so cute. And so here is a completed needlepoint. 
I don't know. I've never stretched or made a pillow before. So that is another thing that I need to learn. And I'm excited to do that. So here's what the back of it looks like. Oh, and my little son is starting to whisper. No, you need to go. You need to go back in the other room, my love. Silly goose. Oh, okay. So you need daddy? Okay, Adam. Adam. We play a super fun game in our household. My husband is uh, hard of hearing and wears hearing aids. And even with that, me trying to speak to him from another room is doesn't work out. Adam. So lots of loud voices. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I also got, she sent me this canvas and it's not done. It is butterfly. And it, so it started even needle in there. Can you help little one, please? Yep. Thank you. And here is, it's got the butterfly and the rose. And so it's, they had started the project. Well, not only did the, it's a started, she sent me all the goodies to finish it because she knows I need more hobbies in my life. So she sent me the yarn to finish it. There's like a little booklet on a medieval art. Now a modern medium of self-expression, a little thing. And what's really cool too, is that it shows she had this component and she even had the the handwork house and it even has the original receipt uh for all of the tapestry wool and tapestry yarn ten a dollar ten a piece yeah i don't know when that came out <laughs> so this the the color is called west point blue and so it looks like if i want to learn how to needle point i have a project to start she also sent me <laughs> oh, okay I'm sorry excuse me <laughs> she also sent me trouser holders and these are used to hang my quilt pieces that are in progress that I'm working on because I have several of those and also to hang my finished needlework that I'm not that I've ironed and that I'm ready that, but I'm not ready to fully finish yet. So she sent me the trouser holders. Yay. <laughs> and then I also got, uh, she sent me, look at this. It's, so it's completed and it is a hummingbird. And this is on a 14 count Ada. It looks like an oatmeal Ada and I'm going to have to give it a little bath because it is dirty. And I just want to show you too, don't judge anyone by their back. We don't judge any backsides. But I am, when I wash it, I got to make sure I don't knot up anything. So this is super cute. It, this looks like something that could be put in a card. It looks like something maybe I could add to some sort of quilt or, you know, all the different things, but I love hummingbirds. Well, I love birds, so that's great to get. And then she sent me a couple of kits. I got Life's a Beach Wear Sunscreen. Yes, SPF, even in the winter time. Cute little dolphin with that little hanger. I think those little hangers are really cute. Uh, I kind of wonder too, the bell pole, the little, the little miniature bell pole hangers. You know what I'm talking about and another one with a little bell pole hanger then she sent me some vintage lavender and lace patterns and it looks like one of these is the pattern that Nell stitched from little yellow house crafts she did a video last month where she has her under the bed box where all of her completed projects that are not fully finished are put and she had a lavender and lace piece and so I think this is the pattern for it uh, where is it I think this is it and she did it like a color conversion to blue 
but there's lavender and lace. This is the bride, a Victorian design, the bride. And then there's another wedding theme one. This one is, I'm trying to see what it's called, the wedding. Look at that train. Oh my gosh, so much fabric. So that's really pretty. Um, these are dated 1992, so you can see there is a difference in style. But, you know, some of the, you can do stitch what you want when you want. And then I had another question that I would love to broach. I got asked in a private message why someone would stitch an older design again a second time or why would they go well taste preference you know but also you need to think about sometimes people have lost their needlework to natural disasters or it, things beyond your control um love significant others that destroy things or you know, all think, you know, some troubling things and having your needlework um, disappear or you've lost the pattern and but you have your project. And so people, it doesn't matter what your pattern is dated. It's still relevant. And it's still if it's meaningful to you, if you if it's a subject matter that you like a project that you're trying to finish up um, or you're trying to replace something that has been damaged. Um, there cross stitch if I if I, I might make a joke that oh look at the dated wedding train like because I would never wear that but that doesn't mean that this isn't meaningful and wonderful to those that did wear that back in 1992 so you know so just something to think about <laughs> okay I stumbled through that 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 was an impromptu little monologue there all right, and the last thing she sent me was Songs for the Gardener, and it's Bless My Garden, and it's a full kit. And with the linen, and I, so that's really cute, and it's a um, Lori Bringaman design, so if you can see that. So Grace knows my heart, knows my passion, so thank you so much, Grace. <laughs> oh my goodness. I... <sighs> I want to thank you all for hanging out with me and talking stitching. I have one more little thing to show you and then I will wrap things up because it is officially getting kind of dark. And so let me move my pile. I ventured out. I think I told you all several weeks ago, I ventured out and went to the thrift store and was like one of those spinning tops. Cause I was so excited. I finally left my house. Well, I purchased and then I, I wanted to show you. I got a sewing box and my husband thought it was a tackle box. I'm like, no, this is a, this is a sewing box. He's like, no, that's a tackle box. I'm like, it's not a fishing box. And the way I could prove it to him was to show him that the inserts have the spaces for your threads with the little beep boops, the little, the points up that, that to, to attach it. So I went through and I wound, there was threads everywhere and I kind of cleaned it all up to kind of show that. And then I got some pinking shears and some other goodies. And I wanted to show for those of you who, um, okay, don't fall, don't fall. That do your own finishing. This is a tool that I wanted to let you all know is wonderful for helping you with your cross stitch finishes. So it's a, it's a, it's a specific, oh, excuse me. It's a specific type of ruler and it's got like a, I don't know the right word for that. And so anyway, so say you want to have two inches on all sides, you can make that mark and then kind of go back and forth with it and make, you know, it's just, it's a nice, it's a sewing ruler, but I have found it tremendously helpful with um, finishing. It's a sewing and knitting gauge. So I have a couple of these. This one 
from this box this thing moves so I it probably won't be terribly reliable but it's just something to think about and I I wanted to show you in the sewing box too I swear cross stitch stuff is everywhere if you look I got some cool lots of cool stuff in here no no joke look at this box of buttons for finishing and the abalone buttons in here are huge most beautiful abalone buttons I've ever seen in my life and I will show them to you here in just a second I also thought it was really cool um I used to I had these tens given to me when I was really little like you put little stuff in so it was really cool to actually see I don't I don't remember ever actually eating this candy, but I remember seeing these little tins when I was younger. So that's really fun. This is what I'm trying to show you all the way down at the bottom of the sewing box. These are dressmaker pins. And I was so excited to see these in here. Dressmaker pins, you ask, what, what, what do you do with those? Well, I, First, need to close the sewing box before I try to move it. I have an example to show you. Teresa Kitten Stitcher did a video a couple years ago where she showed how to pin needlework. So she's the one that taught me about this, okay? These are stainless steel dressmaker pins and you use the stainless steel so they're they don't rust and these are really high quality and they're older um these were number 16 needle points so I was really excited to get and it's a whole box of them so yay to to do pinning so if you don't if you're not lacing your piece I want to show you an example this is the first piece I ever practiced pinning with after watching that video. See, we can all learn. Now, is this my best work? No. Am I going to show it to you anyway? Yes, because perfectionism stalls progress and can be terribly debilitating. Done is good enough. All right. This piece, I got this out of a barn, literally pulled it out of a barn, like a musty, rusty, crusty barn. And I, I washed it, I, I ironed it, I pressed it, all the things. And then I tried my first ever pinning and that I pinned it. And again, not my best work, my first ever time pinning a piece. And I did all this work to realize that I didn't have a frame that fit in. <laughs> so I will be pulling this, the pinning out and redoing this. This is a vintage piece um, that came, it was in cross stitch and country crafts like early 1990s. So I love this piece. I actually had this on my two stitch wish list and then I found this in a barn and it's on 14 count Ada. I'm not sure who the stitcher was. Um, Jill in 93 did, she did mark it, but that's all I know. So I just wanted to show you that. Keep your eyes out for the stainless steel dressmakers pens or sequin pens because they can work for lacing. And also you want to think about having acid free mat board uh, or your mounting board is also acid free. And yeah, inspiration everywhere. Oh, let me show you these huge abalone shells, uh, abalone buttons, and then I'm going to skedaddle. So look at this. Abalone. And then that's the back of it. Sea otters and they get the rock and then they crush the abalone and then eat oh my gosh yeah I love abalone I think it's so beautiful so I have a beautiful uh collection of buttons as well and I'm very grateful for the time that I was able to get out of the house and um get some goodies I have been homebound for the most part since March so I have had uh, two outings since March and one of them was me spinning my top 
so excited safely shopping at the thrift store for all the sewing sensational things <laughs> okay helicopters are going by and the sun is setting so it's time for me to thank all of you for joining me this week I want to send you all lots of love and I hope that you find joy in every stitch that you make this week whether that's crochet knitting quilting cross stitch embroidery whatever you're doing that is bringing joy happiness or comfort to you in your life I hope that you're enjoying it and don't let anyone ever 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 take the joy of stitching away from you stitch whatever you want don't let anyone tell you that it's dated or weird or not with your decor or you're too old for it or you're too young for it no if it makes you happy and it brings you joy to all the other naysayers <laughs> and with that be well and remember that your stitching matters take care and i love you